Welcome back, Cannonites. This week's cannon fodder is pretty packed with content that will drop at the Warzone Firefight update next week, so let's not waste any time and dive right in. We start out with the AV-49 Wasp, the newest addition to Halo's ever-expanding VTOL family. Small VTOL attack craft have been a staple of the UNSC's military inventory for centuries due to their maneuverability and lack of developed infrastructure on many worlds. Using powerful ducted fan engines pioneered on the AV-30 for lift, the AV-49 Wasp is surprisingly nimble for its level of armor protection and armament, and can reach mission areas quickly with the use of air-cooled vector thrust fusion thrusters in forward flight. Designed for expeditionary usage, Wasps can be easily prepped from box to sky and back, and their hardened storage containers have identical dimensions to nav Lodge Com's standard flat containers, simplifying interstellar transport logistics. The AV-49 Wasp supplements existing stocks of AV-14 and AV-22 aircraft in Marine service. Close air support VTOL armed with heavy machine guns and twin rocket launchers. It's good to see UNSC air vehicles make a return, and props to those of you who called this. Hopefully that means we'll see more in the future or in future Halo games. And I'll say this only once, I'm glad it's not the Falcon. In my experience, that thing was good for one thing and one thing only, getting a triple kill for the enemy. Moving forward, we have the newest Halo mech, the Grunt Goblin. For this, I'll let my friend Kip Bip take over. Thank you, stupid human. Hi, internets, Kip Bip here. Today, I have special opportunity to introduce Goblin, ultimate proof of Ungoy superiority. Goblin is built an image of Forerunners prior to Ascension. Well, not what Ang Napnap the Enlightened said. Prophets probably wouldn't agree, but they gone now, so who cares? Anyway, Goblin combines Ungoy engineering ingenuity, Covenant push button assembly, and Ungoy trademark user interface, that mean lots of buttons to push, into a machine that even puny humans fear. Best of all, it have protective shields so stupid demon can't just jump on and bash our grunty heads in. Goblin is equipped with giant needle cannon that can make stupid demon go boom. <laughs> it also have back mounted shard storm launcher that rain cloud of needles on enemy and giant fist for punching your stupid skull in. Rise, Ungoy brothers! Now is time of our grunty ascension! Back to you, human. Uh huh. Well, uh, thanks, Kip Pip. So, yeah, that's the grunt goblin. I really can't wait to see it in action. Only downside, in my opinion, is that it won't be drivable. On the subject of grunts, our next section has Grimm sitting down with Nick Artizone, sorry if I butchered that last name, of 343's narrative development team. Nick wrote a good deal of grunty dialogue in Halo 5, from Battlefield dialogue to some of the Sangheili and Ungoy intel items. It's a great interview with wonderful insight into the return of the English-speaking cowardly grunts of yore, so I definitely recommend giving it a full read. After that, we take a look at the T-50 particle beam rifles that will be added to Warzone variants next week as the Halo 2 beam rifle. Of course, we start out with the base T-50 beam rifle that we all know and love. Not much to say, as I'm pretty sure we're familiar with how it functions. The next variant, though, is the T-50 Alpha, a special variant with an increased rate of fire and improved hip-fire accuracy. The Alpha identifier would seem to come from Installation 04, or Alpha Halo, where Kig Yar attached to the fleet of Particular Justice showed uncharacteristic bravery in the face of the Flood outbreak. The third variant is the T-50 Delta, which creates an unstable gravimetric vortex at the point of impact. The Delta identifier would seem to come from Installation 05, or Delta Halo. During the Great Schism, the Prophet of Truth employed elite teams to hunt down political enemies, equipping them with mastercrafted weapons such as the T-50 Delta. I personally can't say I care one way or another that we're getting the classic T-50 back, as I never really found it all that iconic. But the variants, if nothing else, sound absolutely fun. Next up, we take a look at the maps being added. Molten for Arena, Prospect for Warzone Assault, and the new Forge Canvas title. We'll start, of course, with Molten. Many worlds were glassed by the Covenant, though some suffered worse than others. The world of Ruthersburg was a minor outer colony, famed for nothing and barely charted before the Covenant fleets arrived to burn what few humans inhabited the surface. The alien armada had scarcely begun their bombardment when a section of the planet's fragile mantle buckled, tearing the only inhabitable continent apart in a series of pyroclastic explosions. The barren husk that remained would have remained a footnote in history were it not for slipspace routes discovered after the war, which placed Ruthersburg in a spur of the new Sol Epsilon Eridani trade route. Mega corporations quickly cited resource extraction and refinement operations on the planet's ruined surface, dedicated to feeding metals and rare earths to shipyards building the next generation of UNSC naval vessels above Mars and Tribute. Well, if anyone ever wondered where the resources for all the UNSC's new ships came from, there you go. Next up is Prospect. Jotar Station was an important cog in the Liang Dormund operations on Meridian, 
as the site was a central hub for the mega corporation's seismographic network and labs devoted to solving the hard problem of deglassing the planet. Jorda Station also served as a command center for Liang Dortmund's private security forces, housing a fleet of Warthog utility vehicles, Pelican dropships, Scorpion tanks, and Mantis walkers in case of intrusion by Kigyar raiders or rival corporations seeking to conduct kinetic espionage. Guess that answers the question of why Liang Dortmund had that tank. As we saw in Halo Escalation, among other places, Kigyar raids can be a serious threat to human operations of any kind. The bit of rival corporations is a bit of a surprise though. Corporate espionage has really changed 500 years into the future if you need scorpions and mantises. Finally, we have the new Forge Canvas title. In the centuries that followed humanity's ascent into the heavens and dispersal through the stars, life has been rife with conflict. Whether it be through the internal descent of the insurrection, the bloody years of the Covenant War, or even the harsh realities of colonial homesteading, interstellar expansion has not come without cost. Discovered by Dr. Whit Ragley while on a private scientific expedition, this distant moon remains a nameless paradise, a symbol of both simplicity and boundless potential, upon which lives can be rebuilt and hope restored. That's actually kind of moving, especially considering the side of recolonization we see in Halo 5. But with that, we come to the end. Next weekend we'll be on the lighter side because of RTX, the Rooster Teeth Expo, but there will also be a Halo panel streamed live on twitch.tv slash roosterteeth on Saturday from 5pm to 6pm CST. They'll be discussing Halo 5 Forge on Windows 10 and Halo Wars 2, among other things. The featured universe article this week is Meridian, the history of which we've covered here before. The article also includes map information for the rig and new information on Darkstar and Jorda stations, all of which are set on Meridian. The last thing for today is a shout out to Joseph Ballant, I hope I pronounced that name correctly and his YouTube channel, Movie Hunter 1888 Joseph produces stop-motion animated shorts, notably Halo-themed. Specifically, he asked me to direct you to a 25-minute short called Halo Double Edge. I definitely recommend you checking out the short and his channel. The animations are pretty damn good, so it's worth your while. I've left links on the screen for his short and the channel, as well as in the description, alongside a link to his Twitter page if you want to follow him there. That does it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.